Hi there, I'm Jessica Rose. Today we're going to be talking about finding your niche and your unique style as a jeweller. So we all know that finding your niche is super important and there's a common phrase that says the riches are in the niches, American phrase, but it's true. When you find a niche, your customer understands what you're offering, who you're about, and when they come to buy your jewellery, they know exactly what to expect. Often when we first start out as jewellers, and I was exactly the same as this, I just made pieces that I enjoyed making, and sometimes it was silver, sometimes it was beading, glass, wood, resin, perspex, all sorts. And the problem with that is it can give your online shop or your craft fair a little bit of a jumble sale approach. And when we're trying to build a brand, we're trying to build customer relations and integrity. We want people to respect and understand what we're doing. It's so important to be able to offer a general theme of what it is we're about. So, but I understand it can be difficult sometimes to find that niche but it really does help us focus our branding, our marketing, and everything that we do for our business. So here are some tips that can hopefully help you find the niche that's right for you. So number one, I like to look at materials. So what materials do you use? Is it silver jewelry, metal clay, gemstones, beads? Try and get specific about what the materials are that you're going to be using and stick with it. Even if it's just for a while and you decide later to come back to something else, try and choose something that you're going to focus on for now. Another thing that I like to look at, number two, is your ethos. So what is the ethos behind your business? Is it a luxury business? Is it more everyday jewelry? Is it playful, fun pieces? Are you all about being eco-friendly? Or is it about jewelry that's really from the heart and has that personal message? Finding your ethos is a crucial part of your niche because this is a way that you can communicate that with customers and they understand that even though you might be making pieces that you can get in various different places, the thing that's different about you is your style and the way that you deliver that. So have a think about your ethos as well. Number three is thinking about your interests. So a lot of jewelers have niche businesses around their interests. It might be bikes, or yoga, or political jewellery, or babies and children. So for example, there's a brand now that sells jewellery for babies who are teething. So it's like very plasticky, kind of rubbery jewellery that babies can chew on. And they've managed to make a really big name for themselves in that area. There's breast milk jewellery. There's jewellery with fingerprints on for families, and that's often children as well. Then bike jewellery, I know a couple of jewellers who are bike enthusiasts and they make jewellery out of bike parts or jewellery that has mottos and themes that go along with riding. So have a think about your interests because you might be able to find that you can find a really nice niche under what you're interested in and serve them in a way that nobody else can. Another thing that's good to do is to look for a gap in the market. So whilst you can sell any type of jewellery because it's such a popular thing, pretty much every person that I know buys it, um, it's always nice to have a gap in the market because it means that you're offering something a little bit different. So what we say when we're looking for our niche, it's a combination of things. We combine your interests, the materials you're using, your ethos, your customer's desire and a gap in the market. So I hope that's helped you to find your niche. Don't push it, it's okay to spend a little bit of time on this and work out what's important for you. It's also okay to change your niche. If you do it for a year and it's not working, try something else. But do make that commitment to at least try and be specific and find something that your customers can really relate to. Now, if you'd like to grow your jewelry business, I'd love to help you with that, which is why I've created a free guide to growth. You can download your copy on the link below and get started putting practical things into place to really build your jewelry business today. Also, I'd love to connect with you on social media. We're on Instagram and all the other platforms at Jewelers Academy. Wishing you a wonderful rest of the day and best of luck with your jewelry business. Alrighty, bye for now.